So I think we can start to introduce the, the second speaker of this session. Uh, most of you know her. She's Professor Brovelli from, from Milan. And she, she is going to, to tell us about the, the outcome of this uh, project, this Urban Geobig Data project. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you, and uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, um, yeah, this project is uh, about, you see, uh, urban geobig data. You see also many names as authors, but as a matter of fact, uh, we had to put many, many other names because uh, uh, this is a big project. It's not finished, but uh, uh, it started more than two years ago. Uh, and uh, as you see, many research units and university are involved. And we decided to put only the name of the leader of the different units. Uh, but as a matter of fact, every unit was, is and was composed by four or five people. So, for instance, there are some people who don't appear, who doesn't appear here, like Elul. Uh, uh, she's in my research unit and she will present the next presentation about uh, one specific topic we were working. So my presentation is a very general one, it's just an overview about uh, what we did. Uh, I'm not uh, entering into the details, but at the end of my presentation uh, you will find uh, all the papers that we wrote uh, by now, and so if you are interested in one specific uh, topic, you can contact directly the authors of the paper. Or if not, you can contact me and I will put you in contact with the uh, people. So I'm not able to answer any, every question because uh, I was just uh, um, following uh, mainly the research done by my unit, and I was managing the project as a whole because I'm the leader of the project. Okay, so first of all, we can start with the motivation. And the main motivation is that the, nowadays, the 54% of the world population lives in urban area. And this is really impressive. But uh, according to uh, the report of United Nations and the European Space Agency of 2014, this percentage is expected to increase up to 66% by 2050. It means billions of people. And uh, so we have to consider that having so many people concentrated in areas, these can cause many, many problems that we have to face, or better. It can be an opportunity or it can become a problem, depending on what we are doing before and how we are planning the future cities. Uh, the part that is very relevant for us is that uh, if we consider all the data describing everything around us, it is recognized that more or less the 80% of the data is geographic. So as a meaning or as a greater meaning, if we consider where it happens. Uh, then the other point that is interesting for us is also that if we want to consider these geospatial data, we are dealing with a great variety of data, starting from data from the survey, the GNSS, uh, the photogrammetry and remote sensing, uh, laser scanning data, mobile mapping, geolocated sensors, geotagged web content, voluntary geographic information, and so on and so on. So it's very various. It's not just one typology of data. We have many, many typologies of data. And the main problem is to find efficient way for handling and integrating all those data. Okay, so this was the motivation of the project. And as I told you, many universities are involved. We started the project in 2017, and so the project lasts three years. So uh, we have uh, 
six months now for finishing everything and wrapping. Uh, the idea of the project is uh, to um, develop innovative geographic information methodologies and tools to exploit the integration of uh, what we call the, the traditional geomatics data and earth observation data, statistic data, with the new generated data, like the data generated by the crowd. The approach that we decided to adopt with this uh, project is uh, what is called the data-driven approach. So obtaining uh, information from the data. This is the, the main point. And the uh, aim, the final aim, is to provide uh, tools uh, to, to be made available to the decision makers in order to be able to better manage the cities. Okay, so uh, the other point that is relevant is the point that we decided for the data mining to consider specifically open data. Uh, therefore, uh, our um, procedures, tools, and so on are based uh, completely on the open data available. Uh, one main problem that we had to face is that the situation also in Italy, referring just to Italy, because this, is, this was and is an Italian project, so we are concentrating on some cities in Italy. But even in Italy, the situation is very not homogeneous. There are cities where there are many open data available. There are cities where there are no open data available at all, or very few open data. So uh, we had to deal with a very inhomogeneous situation. And the second point we have to deal w was the problem related to big data. Uh, when we speak about big data, we are not only referring to the uh, volume, so huge amount of data. We have a huge amount of data in some cases, but we are referring also to velocity, so real-time generated data. We are referring also to variety, so data that can be structured and that you have to merge or to integrate with data that are unstructured. And then uh, we have to deal also with the, what is called veracity. So uh, considering the uh, accuracy and certainty related to the data. OK. Uh, this problem is very general. So we have to decide to consider some use cases. And specifically, we decided to concentrate in three use cases. One is mobility. The second one is soil consumption. And the third one is displacement. Uh, the reason why we decided to concentrate on these three is that because they are very different with respect to the procedure and the method that you have to adopt. So for instance, in case of soil consumption and displacement, uh, in order to deal with uh, this phenomena, you have to consider long-term uh, period data. And you have to consider that this phenomenon is uh, distributed on an area dimension. Uh, on the opposite, in case of mobility, we have to consider that generally, from the point of view of the time, this is more limited. We are more interested in real-time phenomena. And uh, it is uh, uh, a um, phenomenon that we can consider as a vector one, distributed on a, the linear graph. Uh, then the other difference is that uh, in case of uh, uh, soil consumption displacement, we are dealing mainly with satellite images, and we can integrate this data with other ancillary data, but uh, the main sources are satellite imagery. On the opposite, in the case of uh, the mobility, we are dealing more with uh, in situ sensors or sensors that are on the cars. OK, as I told you, uh, uh, we were dealing, we are dealing with uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, Italian cities. So we 
defined these three use cases, but we defined also the cities uh, we wanted to work on because, and the, the choice of the city was motivated, um, first of all, by the reason that the different uh, research units are in these cities. And a second point, the second point was that uh, at least some of those cities are the most populated in Italy. Uh, so for instance, if you consider Milan, uh, which is the city where we have the university, you can see that the population of Milan, the municipality of Milan is uh, a bit more than one million, we can say, but if we consider the metropolitan area of Milan, is much more because uh, we reach eight million people. And you see here the inhabitants of uh, the different cities. Um, as this is a, a research project, uh, we decided to uh, consider in every, every step and in every part of the implementation, uh, we consider to use technologies that are innovative. So, for instance, just an example, dealing with the viewer of our system, we decided not to consider the 2D visualization, we could decide to use uh, open layers, uh, leaflet, and everything for showing the data, uh, but uh, uh, on the opposite, we decided to concentrate on the usage of uh, virtual globes, on the usage of virtual globes, and uh, you will see later uh, Elul, uh, who will explain you what we did. Okay, so for the first case of the mobility, um, the first uh, uh, problem uh, we have uh, uh, to deal was the problem of collecting data. So at the end, we were able to collect both private and public, so data from private and public vehicles. Uh, at least in some cases, we had some uh, sample of data in such a way to start studying uh, this situation in the, all the cities. Uh, what we had to uh, deal with, with respect uh, to the tools and methodologies, uh, was to merge uh, what is uh, what we have in the field of GIS and what we have in the field of the intelligent transport, what is called the intelligent transportation system. Uh, very often these two words are not speaking together. So you have to understand the ontologies and uh, the procedures, the methodologies that are applied in the two words in order to merge them. So the main problem was to put all the pieces of information coming from people working on these, in this field uh, in such a way to define a unique GIS spatial data model. And specifically, also in this case, we had to uh, choose what we wanted to do because obviously this team is very, very uh, spread. And we decided to concentrate by now on these, uh, on these themes, so, uh, the traffic condition uh, with almost uh, an almost real-time mapping generation, uh, road graph impedance, which uh, on the opposite is given considering uh, uh, the mean travel speed and the times, uh, routing preferences, uh, and spatial origin destination matrix. So now this is what we have available for those five cities, starting from some samples that were made available as open data um, and uh, um, for the five cities. Uh, the second case that uh, we uh, are considering is the case of land cover and soil consumption. The reason why we are considering that is because it is recognized uh, the soil is considered as the most important no renewable resource. Uh, generally, uh, when we speak about soil consumption is when there is a change from a non-artificial to an artificial land cover. And 
What is really crucial is that doing the opposite is a, a slow process. So if something becomes artificial, it requires time to be converted again to non-artificial. Uh, OK, so uh, the point is to, uh, also in this case, starting from uh, uh, data observed, uh, considering Earth observation data, and so starting from the Earth observation platform, to assess the status of the soil. OK, so. Uh, we did that, we are doing that using uh, semi-automatic uh, procedures and uh, starting from uh, Earth observation data, specifically uh, the Sentinel-2 images, but also the Sentinel-1 data. And using uh, also as ancillary data, many other data that you can see here, also VGI data, in situ data, and so on. And we have the statistics about what what happened in the last years. Uh, the third case that we consider is a case uh, of displacement. Uh, the main reason is because in Italy we have some problems related to displacement in the cities. And the other reason is that in this case uh, we have also a huge we have also huge archives or other images. Specifically, what we considered are uh, ERS and MVSAT satellite data from 1992 to 2011. All the images that are available. So we derive this um, dynamic map, map of displacement that you can visualize on the uh, website, but uh, that you can also query in order to see in the individual points what happened in the last 20 uh, years. Um, the other point that we have to deal is to find, uh, um, because as I told you, we are using, uh, we are using uh, virtual globes, so 3D visualization. Uh, so we have to deal with the free modeling of the data, starting in the most of the, in all cases, starting from every shape file. And so uh, one part of the uh, project was devoted to creating a procedure starting from every shape file to obtaining a CTGML, that is the standard that uh, can be used for uh, the visualization of the data. OK, I have three minutes. Three minutes. So very quickly, uh, going to the infrastructure, we decided the best way was to have a distributed architecture in which every unit made available in a standard way using OGC standard, the data they created. And there is a common endpoint node in this spatial data infrastructure that provides the discovery facilities. Uh, the other relevant point with respect to the architecture is that everything is implemented using a free and open source software. Uh, with respect to the discovery, uh, we have uh, a catalog service that is based on GeoNode and metadata. Um, there is uh, something special with respect to general um, catalog service because in Italy we have a standard that is a bit different with respect to Inspire One. So this is based on the Italian standard that is this RNDT. And, uh, um, and the, the metadata are of, uh, offered by the different nodes or the infrastructure are periodically harvested in such a way that the catalog is updated. Uh, about the 3D client, I, I'm saying nothing because uh, uh, the next presentation will be related to the ground deformation visualization. And then if you are interested on this specific topic, so virtual globes for web visualization, uh, there will be also tomorrow the presentation in operator room in the EO challenge about the visualization of land cover and soil consumption. Uh, so this is the end of my presentation, just uh, to concluding. Uh, it's a very general overview. The point is that uh, in the future we will have to deal with uh, a growing amount of spatial data. 
uh, what we decided to do is uh, to create some procedure and uh, some uh, guidelines and also a special data infrastructure for dealing with uh, the data of these five cities in Italy. And uh, the most relevant point is that what we have in mind is that we have to start from the spatial data for converting them to spatial information that can be used by everyone, as a matter of fact, for planning and managing the future cities. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, to be on time. Nice working. Uh, there are questions. No questions? Oh, it's good. <laughs> I have, I have, okay. <laughs> Please. Hello. It's so hard to say a data is a big data or just a data. So, yeah, what's the number of, um, number of data you're using for uh, separate layers, maybe? Do, do, you have, do you have the maximum number of layers or the maximum number of data that you have collected? Oh, uh, I don't have in mind exactly, but if you consider only the last case that I presented, the case about displacement, and uh, uh, the fact that, that we considered all the radar images in 20 years, you can imagine how big is the archive of data. I don't know exactly how many gigabyte, but it's 20 years of images. Or with respect to the um, mobility, uh, for instance, uh, we have some sample, but these sample are very detailed in terms of time, are given every, I don't know, five seconds? I don't remember if it is five seconds. And even if you are dealing with two months of data with a resolution of five seconds, you are dealing with a big amount of data. And uh, this is the same also for the land cover, because for the land cover, if you consider that, uh, start considering all the satellite imagery, in case of Sentinel-2, now we have a repetition every few days. And so if you are dealing with that, it's also a very big amount of data. I didn't enter into the detail of the data, but um, it was big. <laughs> it is big. There are other questions. Just a quick question. So I, I know, I know because... You're <laughs> part of the project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just maybe to explain the uh, pub uh, because we speak about open data why vehicles data are really difficult now we know to to get so just share the experience on how of struggle we oh, <laughs> we had yeah. on, on getting getting that yes no no obtaining data about vehicle is very complicated uh, also in case of uh, the public transportation in fact uh, at we had the data only of public transportation only for two cities. Uh, the, we, we are still asking and uh, waiting for the answer from the other cities. Uh, on the opposite, uh, we were, were enough lucky of obtaining some open data about uh, the private vehicles. And uh, mm, those data were related to the insurance of the car because uh, for some insurance, you have to put this uh, uh, box on the car. I don't know if you have. I have it. And uh, this is collecting data that uh, can be anonymized and can be shared. So we obtain this kind of data as open data for a certain period. Uh, and uh, it's very important because uh, it's a really a rich data set that you have to consider for starting with, yeah. Okay, thank you. We have time for one fast question in case. Oh, probably I can add also something else because I did not enter in many other details, like for instance, uh, uh, when I say that, that the situation in the cities is very, it's definitely not homogeneous. You have to consider that, for instance, for Milan, we have uh, very good uh, 
uh, database, or topo what is called topographic database. <coughs> In case, for instance, of Rome and Naples, that are two important cities, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, the data topographic database of Rome and Naples. So we had to use OpenStreetMap for those cities because it's the only available database. And so we had to deal also with problems related to the quality of OpenStreetMap. So we developed also some approaches for assessing OpenStreetMap data, comparing with the existing um, topographic database, and so on and so on. So the, the research is much more richer, but uh, as a matter of fact, you find here at least the, uh, all the papers that we published by now. And uh, in the next six months, for sure, we are going to publish more because uh, we have to wrap up all the outcomes of the project. OK, thank you so much. Perfect on time. So I will invite you to stay for the next talk. Uh, we have the five minutes in case you need to move.